Here's a pro tip for you. Find an excavator who's semi-retired so he can leave his tractor here for weeks on end and he can just come and work and do what he wants. Right now we are setting our gas line. Our gas line intentionally was going to be in the same trench as our power and water, but the power and water can run underneath the shop no problem. Running gas, however, underneath a slab is a big no-no, and in order to do so, you have to put it in special conduit, and it just really wasn't worth it. So what we decided to do was just wait, and we're gonna dig it now. So he's gonna dig it now, dig it out this way. We're actually gonna connect in the same trench that our footings are in for the shop and run it clear past where the tanks will go. I'm not complaining about the view out of this window any day of the week, but I'm really liking it right now, seeing a tractor there. Guys, I almost forgot, because gas isn't very traceable um, to look up your utilities, water's traceable, they can track that. It's really easy to mark where that's at. Electrical, obviously they can track that, but gas, you can't. So when you run gas line, you have to sister it with some copper wire. So I've got some solid strand copper wire, and uh, this is just gonna go run right with it. You don't gotta ground it, you just have to, there's no way to trace it. So oh. like if somebody came to look for utilities or whatever, yeah. there's no way to detect gas. So you oh. run a ground wire with it. And they'll connect off that. And then they can tell like water, um, it conducts, and then electrical obviously conducts, but gas won't, so. Oh, no way. Unless you light it. <laughs> huh? Unless you light both ends up. Yeah. <laughs> well, like even like natural gas, you know, it puts off kind of a funny smell. Yeah, isn't that like... That's added. Yeah, it's added. added you can't detect it. Yeah. Just as quickly as we dug the trench, we are backfilling it. Now he's gonna lay about a foot of material on there, just loose. I'm gonna go get a warning label that we have, just so that if somebody, me, anybody, whatever, are digging, there's a warning track just in case. So hopefully we don't hit that or ever hit the gas line. I'll be doing the work around here, so hopefully we won't, but you never know. That's what you would do per code anyways. You'd want safety tracks, the ground wires, all that stuff. Talk about being close to your work. <laughs> this is amazing. My cue. He's got.
got the one foot track down, so now the runner will label. My turn. at a really cool stage in the house. We are starting to put in final details on the exterior as well. There are a few things that your house have to have, obviously. One is a porch, and we've waited um, as long as we possibly could to put the porch on for a couple reasons. One, that I don't wanna have traffic coming across there, and it's really deterred that. And what traffic we have come across there, it's helped protect that. And two, it's allowed my mason and the door company to get their stuff put in so that we can cement perfectly up to it. This section right here is the top porch cap. This is the step coming down and it actually goes flush with the very bottom of that door. So that's sealed completely. There's no little step. We contemplated on having a little step there, but code says a step either has to be so big or non-existent. If it's not big enough, it becomes a trip hazard. So we weren't kind of in those dimensions. So we brought the whole porch up to that level, made it one flat, smooth surface, which would be great for uh, family members and um, kind of a better seating area anyway. And then Bonnie's wish was to have the step sit all the way around. One of the last pieces of concrete as well is right here behind this retaining wall. We had to wait for these to be poured and ready because this is where our air conditioning units are going to go. They're stubbed outside of the house and they will sit here on this pad right here. We're actually gonna cut it off. I thought going to the edge would be great, but we realized we don't need eight more feet of concrete, so we'll cut it off and go back to there. When you start building your home, before you get your um, building permit even looked at, you have to have a zoning clearance. We've been over this before. Those videos are actually in my playlist and I will link them as well. The things that the county or city want to know is if you have water, which we do, we sit on a well. We've got that taken care of. If we have sewer, which we do, we have that taken care of, that septic system's all the way in place. And third is if you have fuel and power. 
well, I guess third and fourth. So power, we took a, it took a while to get power out here. Not so much for us to get it out here, but to get decided who was going to service us with power. And um, we got that figured out. But next is fuel. You need some kind of a fuel to run your home. You can run it on just electrical, um, but that's pretty expensive. Out here we use natural gas or propane. We are on propane because natural gas is not provided where we live. So we use propane and we, you saw me run that propane line all the way down and out. And now it's gonna run to a flat pad right here that'll put our propane tanks. And those tanks will be coming next week. So we've been waiting on that as well. You guys remember a couple months ago when me and my excavator dug a really quick trench and I was working underneath him and getting that trench all set for some propane? Well, our propane tank finally arrived. I have been waiting for a thousand gallon propane tank for a long time and uh, they just finally got back in stock. Now, if you remember when we did concrete a couple days ago, we did a porch cap, we did an air conditioning pad, and then we did a propane pad. I want my tanks to sit on here. They don't have to be per code. There's no code about that. What you do want them doing is sitting level and you want them on a material that isn't just dirt, to me at least, so that it doesn't sink into the dirt. So then the next option is gravel. But by the time I put all the gravel in that we do have here and put something around it to keep the gravel at bay, I've spent some money. And two, I'm gonna get a lot of weeds. So at the end of the day, a pad was economically the great choice and it's maintenance free somewhat so i built the pad big enough for two tanks but we are only purchasing one at this time i think by the winter time we'll have a second one coming um, because they said you could very easily burn through a thousand gallons the top 20 percent of this tank is for the vapors and that actually creates a psi it creates almost 100 psi so they put a regulator here on top this red one it brings it down to roughly 10 PSI. And this is where they'll come and refill it as well. They'll tap in and just pump it full. Well, 800 gallons full. And then it goes through this line. That's that three quarter inch line we buried. They use this gray here because it's weatherproof. It's meant to be outside and exposed. Um, that is not, so that is a direct bury. So they have to put the same gray at the house as well. Now, once we are at the house, we have another regulator here. This regulator takes it from 10 PSI and it has a shut off as well, which it is shut off to half of a PSI. Half a PSI is a small number, but you really don't need a lot of pressure. You just sometimes need volume. So with all of our gas in, I am gonna close the vlog here. If you like today's task, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'm trying to think of a cool saying, you know, like you do your own two days task or until next time, keep tasking or be the taskmaster of your own today. That's not bad.